war is always bad, specifically for the planet. If we want to continue uh, fighting battles like environmentally conscious humans, we must make the change to sustainable tanks and weaponry. There are so many new concepts um, for our battery-powered fighter jets that can carry many more um, missiles, biodegradable missiles, of course. Something literally everybody can do to stop this nonsense is, for example, block the roads to gardens and farms so the plants don't get overrun by these heavy, heavy tanks. Hand grenades, very important. If you use hand grenades, please use vegan grenades. No animal should have to give their life for all this mayhem and chaos. They have a special sticker on them. You really can't miss them in the uh, grenade market or wherever you buy them. Yeah, I cover all of this and more in my newest book, Vegan Wars. That video is hilarious. <laughs> I'm sorry, my book won't be as good as Vegan Wars. I mean, I can't handle that. <laughs> Oh man! I figured that was the perfect video to start with because AI people thought getting, it was me. But AI <laughs> is getting so good now. Like that, right. I, the first time I saw that, I was like, "Is this real? There's no way yeah. this is real, right?" Uh, we should make clear for YouTube that that was not real because the last time <laughs> okay. we played a not real vid video, Anthony, we got taken down. That is true. Yes, that was that not was a, a real okay. video. <laughs> I was um, I I saw a clip of that a couple yesterday, maybe, and I was wondering for a minute. Like, because it sounds like something she would say. AI, they have the voice stuff down really good, man. If you yeah. have enough audio of a person and you put it into that thing, I mean, there's probably enough audio of us now with our podcast that they can. I'm have just a glad no one in the world is going to want to hear more of your voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So Daniel O'Connor coming back for a second time, which Thank I can't you. believe. When I when I hear a person's willing to come on a second time, it's pretty. Hey, outrageous. I'm I'm gonna start I'm gonna start auditioning for my third time here tonight. We'll see Dude, if you I get have an, back. You have I don't an know. open <laughs> invite to come on anytime. Your yeah, that show we did last time was such an interesting and good show, and you were still in the middle of writing it. And I begged you to come on because <laughs> um I had heard some of the things you were talking about on your show, and I just thought they were so interesting. I'm like, Daniel, you gotta come on with us. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. And I pestered you enough to get you to come on. Well, we thank you for doing that, because I wanted to always, and that was just like, I was putting this indefinite pause in almost all, all my stuff, because this, because <laughs> writing this ridiculously large thing just took it took a toll on me. <laughs> but but yeah, now that it's done, I'm, I'm happy to be back on. How long yeah, did you it take to write such a long book? Um, lots of lots of coffee and God's grace. Those, those are the only two <laughs> things you need: coffee and God's grace. <laughs> All right, before before we get into questions here, we're uh, everybody, please hit like, subscribe. You guys know the drill. Everybody does that. Also, um, I there's a lot of new subscribers to the channel. So what I did was I went through all of our all of our videos and I pulled out a sample of um, probably like the best 10 that I thought were good starter videos for anybody just introduced to our channel. Huh? I think it's 20 videos, 20 video. Okay. So the, I picked like the top 20, but if you go to it, I, I called it, um, a B starter playlist or something. It's yeah. the best the ABCs of, of AB. It's what you should have called. It. Yeah, it's not, it's not like the, the the best of or or the starter pack or something. I don't know. But if you go through our playlist, you'll see if you if this is your first like your first checking our channel out. It's a really good list to start on. Um, and then also we have a local. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna talk with Daniel for about forty five minutes to an hour on here, and then we're gonna jump over to locals and we're gonna talk about. I want to talk about um, Israel, Palestine, and christian zionism and kind of some topics that youtube wouldn't be crazy about so that's what we're going to do after this you guys can come check us out join our locals um daniel yeah since the last time we talked you hey, when there was, was i wanted you to come back on in between and you were like i just can't i'm so buried <laughs> this book really took the life out of you right oh yeah i mean it was it was the spiritual warfare i had to wade through demonic stuff knee deep as i was writing part four of the book just with and and praise god i was protected by you know i took the the right measures to protect myself daily mass daily rosary all that so the uh it didn't get it didn't get particularly dark personally but just the struggles of getting through this and wading through all this stuff which really hasn't been exposed yet from a catholic perspective which was the pro which is largely what inspired me to write this is that there's been uh, some really solid evangelical Christian exposés on this deception, this diabolical deception, some really good Eastern Orthodox exposés on it. A number of Eastern Orthodox priests even have written very well in this, but there's been almost nothing. 
from the Catholic perspective, pointing out how diabolical this is, which is weird because as Catholics, we have by far the strongest case against aliens, even with, with the magisterium and, and, and the popes and uh, sacred tradition. It, we have the by far the best argument. So yeah. I not wanted to get that, everything attacked, everything dealt with in that one book. Not only do we not have a Catholic arguing against it, we actually had some Catholics arguing for it and where they the were yeah. where they were trying to because I've, I've come across this a bunch where even people i like i mean i think even eric salmon said it he said mm -hmm. uh, i'm not saying there's aliens but if there was it wouldn't contradict my faith and, and and i think almost like people were were setting it up like well guys don't worry if, if we find out there's aliens you still could be catholic but it's mm -hmm. to me it's just such a preposterous idea mm -hmm. and it all kind of stems from evolution and this idea that if life evolved on this planet, it must have evolved somewhere else. Right. Right. And what you were actually, you said, you said that a lot of like, even on the SETI site, they, they, like they say something like that, right? Yeah. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And this is, this is so mainstream and I'm not even theorizing here. You can go look at their open public statements. This is the official, it's even got government funding search for extraterrestrial intelligence, S E T I. It's the most um, it's the most renowned and, and well-funded of, of the various alien programs out there. So they're trying to make radio contact with aliens, which is actually if there were aliens, that would be the only really way to do it. But which, which you which we would have been guaranteed to do. And this is a whole chapter in my book. If there were aliens, we'd basically be guaranteed to see them with electromagnetic communications millennia before uh, actual physical contact, which is one of a thousand ways we can prove there's no aliens uh, out there or here. But anyway, yeah, the head of SETI, he says that he's searching for extraterrestrials because if we here on Earth, if we human beings are all there is, that would mean, and he's right about the premise, he says that would mean we're a miracle. And then he follows that up by saying, and if you're talking about miracles, you're not doing science. So yeah. this is their way to disprove God. They want to find extraterrestrials to disprove God. And as you said, Anthony, like, you know, it's and I'm not at all attacking certain people who believe in aliens. I understand this is confusing these days. That's largely why I wrote this book to try to put that confusion to rest. Um, but that this idea, OK, if if there's if there's aliens, it wouldn't disprove the faith. And it's, it's to me, that's kind of a tautology because nothing can disprove the faith because, yeah. <laughs> because the faith is absolutely certain. So I think. When you phrase something in that way with a tautology, a truism, in other words, a trivial assertion, it's I think what you're doing is exposing the fact that you don't believe what you're saying at all. You, if you can only approach the alien question by saying if they're there, they wouldn't disprove our faith. That, that doesn't say anything because nothing could disprove our faith. So it, when, when people try to position their thesis in those terms, I think that's very telling about their approach. Did you get into um, project? What is it? Blue beam or anything like, do you discuss that? In I the did book not. And I've, I, I was, I was debating for a long time whether I should have a chapter on project blue beam. And I decided against it just because um, it's not exactly a short book as yeah. it is. And uh, <laughs> that's shrouded in a lot of debate as to what's real and what's conspiracy. And, and I just didn't want to try to settle all that in here, but that, but that it's very possible indeed that there is this, that a lot of what is being seen is not simply demonic. I think this is a mix of demonic deception and uh, government psyop. So those things that we can't chalk up to demons, and I'm not, you know, I shouldn't even say chalk up. It's not like I'm using this as an ad hoc explanation. Well, I, I People have said, why would you use that as your premise? It must be demons. That's not my premise. That's my conclusion. Yeah. My, my premise hmm. is I'm going to follow the facts wherever they lead to. And what they lead to, every single time from every angle you approach them intellectually and in light of faith both you you arrive at the conclusion that this must be demonic you know there's a there's a certain very popular career lay apologist and i just discovered a couple days ago that he did a catholic answers podcast against show, radio show against me last year which i never i never knew happened but um he he's he's got all these videos saying it, it's not always aliens you can't always say i mean sorry it's it's not always demons <laughs> and to which i respond no one is saying it's almost oh, it's, yeah. it's always demons. 95 to 98 percent of the UFO sightings are ordinarily earthly phenomena that are misinterpreted. I, no one denies that. Even the most zealous of the evangelicals out there warning against alien demon deceptions will admit that almost all of these sightings are just of a weather balloon or a drone or, or whatever. So yeah. 
I don't know who these people are referring to when they say, when these apologists say, it's not always demons. Some people say it's always demons. No one says it's always demons. What we're saying is those fraction, that small fraction, two to 6% of alien UFO sightings, whatever, that can't be explained by an ordinary earthly phenomena, those are the demonic ones. And yes, if we, we can examine this from every angle with science and the faith, and we come to the same conclusion, this can't be anything but demonic so when you even look at the way technology explodes in the 20th century it, it's almost unreal how it just explodes in this unbelievably fast fashion where you get you get the mm -hmm. industrial revolution you get the automobile you get television you get computers it it just happens in such a rapid succession that even the stuff that isn't of of an actual demonic thing that the person is seeing you, you'd have to be I, I can't possibly imagine these technologies came about without demonic influence themselves that could also be the case i i think this is also a chapter in my book i believe that the devil got a significantly longer leash in a certain year yeah. And I'll let, maybe I'll let you, maybe I'll give you a pop quiz and ask you a few. Should I, should I? <laughs> so, okay. Leo, Pope Leo the 13th, he had this vision mm -hmm. of the dialogue between God and Satan, right? And I was one of many people speculating about when that period of time. So he saw God and his permissive will allowing Satan a period of time, 75 to 100 years of greater power. And many have speculated, myself included, as to when that period of time began. And I, and I wrote back in, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, some, a long time ago, I was thinking maybe this began with uh, World War I or the onslaught of communism in 1917. But then that's basically been disproven, right? <laughs> because we already hit the 100-year anniversary. Yeah. We haven't seen Satan's chain. We haven't seen his, his, his rule being broken. So clearly... But when and when I was writing this book and as I was thinking and praying more about that, I was kind of uh, wrong there in, in just my approach because Satan doesn't actually need a longer leash to institute genocides and wars and evil political systems. He's been doing that throughout history. That That's just the circumstances need to be right. What he needs a longer leash for is to institute a type of delusion a degree of demonic wonders and false signs and wonders that he hasn't been able to before to really inject himself and his minions even more uh, openly into the world. Like back in the ancient pagan days before Christ bound Satan, you know, chained Satan with his sacrifice on the cross. And when did we see that explode? 1947. Yeah, I was going to say the atom bomb, right? Well, that's well, a little. Yeah, that's that yeah. big with that. That factors heavily into this. Definitely. Because all the supposed revelations from the extraterrestrials were, were giving all these feel-good messages about the atom bombs, yeah, and how bad that is and how we're about to destroy the planet. And suddenly, you know, once the, once the cultural narrative changes, the ETs are no longer warning us about atomic war. They're warning us about, you know, global warming. Of course, they follow yeah. the, the trend <laughs> faster. So it's, 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 these are not obviously not aliens giving us messages. But in 1947, that's the year where we went from no UFO sightings, absolutely none. No flying saucers. There are almost no flying saucer reports before 1947. And then when you get Kenneth Arnold and Roswell in summer of 1947, you've got hundreds across oh, the world. that's when that happened? That happens in 1947. Yeah, immediately after that. So I believe that that's actually the year. I think that that is the year where Satan's power increased dramatically in the world, 1947. And if you look at 75 to, and I've got other reasons for believing that also, which I Put, which I explain more of in the book. But if you look at 75 to 100 years from then, that puts us right now into the period of time from, you know, 2022 to 2047, where this his power could be broken at any point in that window. If indeed, if indeed my speculation is accurate, which it's very fallible, it's just speculation, but I think it makes sense. We go, now, go ahead, you say that you wrote this book knowing that it was, it was about to be disproven. What do you, yeah. What do you mean by that? Yeah. And that's and I and I I threw that into my introduction a little bit, little bit later on because I I I just I believe that they are going. There's going to be an official announcement soon. I hope I'm wrong about this, but I, I don't think I am. I think they the day of disclosure 
is coming soon. This is what the UFOlogists have been talking about for decades. The day where the government openly acknowledge, op openly admits, after decades of of heroic efforts from whistleblowers and yeah. ordinary people like you, demanding transparency, demanding the truth about UFOs, the day where the government finally admits, yes, they're here, we're in contact with them, We've, we 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 have their UFOs, we even have their corpses and everything, but they're, we know they're here, and here's their message. That's the day of disclosure. I think that is coming. And people are going to look at that, and they're going to say, that disputes your book, doesn't it? And I wanted people to know from the very onset, that's the whole reason I'm writing this book, is yeah. because I think that's coming. And that will not at all dispute the fact that only man bears the divine image, that there are no aliens, and this is all a deception. Well, that's how that's how you know it is part government psyop too, because right. even the way they've been, it's so funny. Like every time, it, it, it's really funny because every time there's some crazy bad thing happens in the administration, you get uh, you get some guy from the CIA or the intelligence agencies comes out and says, "Oh well, I saw the UFOs," and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. the whole news is covering the stupid UFO story, and then the government, somebody else from the government, will come out and they'll say, "No, no, 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 this guy's crazy. He doesn't know what he's talking about." And you could see the seeds of a government psyop being mm -hmm. dropped in there. It, it's pretty, it's pretty wild when you yeah, when you they're look suddenly starting them. to realize how useful this is. Yeah, and I I can't pretend to know when the government psyop part started. I believe the diet, the directly demonic plan started centuries ago as for human beings you know we're very fickle or so i don't know maybe it started back in roswell some have argued that and i quote a number of authors who argued that in the book it may be more likely that it started more recently because maybe somewhere in the last several years they realized how useful this this lie will be in order to enact their plans you know with the the, the last tyranny didn't uh give them all the opportunities they wanted to institute their their agenda, which I won't even name here because I in my last video with Mark Mallet, I like I, I dared to say the word that's it's TGR. The, 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 there's the abbreviation for it. And then I got this. We got this big sign at the mm. bottom of the video. Oh, Here's really? the real truth about the you know what? <laughs> yeah, reset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so I can't even say. But but the point is, we know that they're up to no good. We know that they're looking for the next excuse to institute the greatest tyranny the world has ever suffered under. And 2020. To 2022, they they sure that was sure horrible, but that was a dry run for what's coming yeah. next, and they're looking for the the excuse for the next one. And and I believe World War Three is coming. That's going to give one opportunity, the 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 zero carbon agenda. That's going to give another opportunity. But the supreme deception is going to be beyond even those. I think, and I think this ET deception gives the greatest, most powerful opportunity to the New World Order type to institute a crackdown on civil liberties the likes of which the world has never seen if, if they say there's now an extraterrestrial threat they can do whatever they want yeah to, com to combat that and and the thing is what we're dealing with with ai in the mix with this whole thing because mm -hmm. they now have the they now have the technology to i mean you can do it from your phone with augmented reality and make something look like it's there that's not there mm -hmm. like legit make it look like something is there that it's not so between the, the capabilities they have with artificial intelligence to completely fake. I mean, you you look at even the, the whole situation in Ukraine. They were playing video game footage and telling us this was real footage. Right. That is right. how good CGI is at that mm -hmm. at this point, right? They would be able to to really fake out the entire globe if they Easy. wanted to do something like that. Yeah, and that's that, that the AI and the ET deception. I think really converge, and that's why I have I've several a number of chapters in the book on the ai deception as well but when you've got the, the the more the world gets almost all of its knowledge through what they see on the screen that happens to be in front of them in any given moment a phone or a tv or a computer or whatever when that reaches a certain critical mass you'll be able to delude the whole world overnight by just unleashing a bunch of ai generated lies that people will believe because they, they don't live in the real world at all everything is through their screen and um that's that's why i've got a couple chapters in there like there's certain questions you got to ask when they unleash this deception upon us who exactly do you know you can already trust who is asserting publicly under oath even that he saw this thing with his own eyes in person y you've got to pretend you're on a jury and that someone's life depends upon this 
and you've got to rigorously apply logic to the claims related to the ET and the AI deceptions that are coming our way. Who exactly do you know you can already trust is claiming a direct physical experience with something? And do the conclusions that he's presenting actually, are they actually a description of what he truly saw or are they an interpretation or is he simply doing hearsay? For example, Grush, that we're not talking about some sort of AI reality here, but Grush, he's obviously a real person. He claimed he took the world by storm saying the US government has UFOs and alien bodies. And then what did it suddenly, when, when you actually look at the fine print, he never saw anything. He is pure hearsay. All of this stuff is hearsay if you actually dig a little bit. And that's going to be true with the day of disclosure itself even. That'll also, uh, we'll be able to uncover the lie eventually, but it's going to be very hard at first. When did this whole um, book get put on your heart? What? How long ago was it? What Was there an event that happened? Almost that three years. Yeah. I keep trying to mine my uh, my memory for the particular moment that that realized I, this is a battle I've got to fight. Um and, and it was almost three years ago, I know, because that's when I started really researching and writing this. And I think I wrote my first public article against aliens in like, I think it was early 2021. But um, when, when I noticed how much this was infiltrating the church, because, you know, the world can succumb to all sorts of garbage. And, and, I, and I weep over that and pray for the world. But what really gets me is when not only the church at large, but Orthodox Catholics start succumbing to these deceptions. That's what really breaks my heart. People who really should be knowing better suddenly, because it, 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 it's like adultery is what it is. And that's what the Old Testament, you know, that, that's the ultimate um, allegory for even ancient Israel's uh, idolatry. It's like, it's like a, a faithless bride. Yeah. And that's what I believe is happening when Catholics start wondering wow, maybe there's all sorts of other churches out there. Maybe Jesus is just one incarnation of God. Maybe the Virgin Mary is just one of the many mothers of God. And this, I hope this sounds blasphemous to you because it is, but this is what the so-called Orthodox Catholic apologists are now saying. They're saying, oh yeah, that's fine. And then they've got chapters and chapters and chapters saying why wow, that's fine. And that, to me, that's adultery. You, you just committed like adultery against God because you, you're starting, you're, you're wedding yourself to all these ideas that are so foreign to the gospel, so foreign to the faith. And it's not just about the great deception coming. It is about that. It's about what you do to your faith here and now. It's, what you, it's how you undermine your faith here and now and how you water down your own recitation of the creed itself at mass when you start wondering if we're just one of all sorts of other in humanities or, or intelligent civilizations and our church is just one of innumerable churches spread throughout the galaxies and jesus is just and this is what the et revelations are saying i got chapters in this as well they're, they're coming down and saying okay so jesus is the incarnation of this local universe and there's actually a few other million universes and he's got several uh, dozen under his charge but then there's actually a million other incarnations most of them much higher than him and this this is this like has already mormonism. infiltrated the church hugely I, I was just gonna say that sounds like mormonism almost it is and mormonism is one of many uh diabolical et revelations and there's so many others and many of you know mormonism explicitly hasn't infiltrated catholicism well so, uh, implicitly maybe it has but there's a number of diabolic blatantly false private revelations uh, from the either from the extraterrestrials or about the extraterrestrials and they are are infiltrating the church and and no one is trying to stop it and I'm, that's what i'm trying to do with this book so that's what really you know sorry to i'm droning on again because I'm, I'm very zealous about this as you can see so i got an infinite number of things i could say here but you asked me about what really got me onto this and when i started seeing um am i am i breaking up can you guys hear me did yeah. i suddenly start freezing? yeah no you're, you're, no, you're still good great. okay because i'm freezing on my screen but hopefully i'm still coming through with my audio at least when, when I saw, for example, like Pope Francis saying baptize a Martian or something. Yeah. And, and I saw that Vatican nativity scene a few years ago, which looked like aliens. And, and I just started seeing more and more apologists talking about how this is fine. And, and it just it reached a critical it reached a breaking point at some point about three years ago. And then even seeing Obama and this is back to the world, seeing Obama say that once we discover extraterrestrials, it'll make new religions pop up. It, yep. it seems like this great deception in the world and the church is brewing. Yeah, you got you had Obama saying that about the aliens, and then you have that uh what's that guy, Harari, the 
Uval, yeah. U- Uval Harari. He's, Uval he's, Harari. He he's talking it, yeah. about how the AI, the AI is going. Is to, it's going to make new religions because we have this new new intelligence that can give us new scriptures and things like that. You really do see a very tight association between the AI and the alien thing. Mm-hmm. What? So now you're now the last time you were on, we talked right off the bat in the catechism. It does say man alone bears his image. So that's the right. title of the book. What did, what were you able to find back in like the fathers, things like that? Like, were these things actually pondered before? Oh, yeah. Huge. Oh, they were. And that's why I want that's another reason I really want. That's one of the things that motivated this book. It's all these Catholic authors were, were arguing. And there was an article on um, what's that garbage? What's that garbage? Uh yeah, so okay, so someone just put the name on there that I was avoiding <laughs> saying. But because I tried to avoid yeah, calling no that such name. Cl- <laughs> <laughs> so there's the one that has done apparently Catholic Answers radio shows against me that I haven't listened to. I, I haven't listened to because I didn't know they existed yeah. until like a day ago. And listen, but, even if they but that even if Jimmy Aiken disagrees with you on this, it doesn't it this is the, this, there shouldn't be any real tension there. I mean yeah. you, you, he's wrong. Uh huh. He is. Yeah. You know, and and, but and, he, not, and I'm sure I'm sure he's a much better Catholic than I am. I'm just yeah. We're not making any ad hominem attacks. Like, we're I'm just saying. Yeah. He's, I'm he's sure just... everybody who says there's aliens is way better better Catholic than I am because I'm 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 a complete knucklehead. But I I do happen to be right on this, and it's nothing special <laughs> about me. It's just a really easy. <laughs> oh, you're to side, you got to tell me. <laughs> I've got the whole Bible on my side. I got all the popes on my side. I got all the saints on my side. I like a, a kindergartner could have could have done this as long as could have written this book as long as he did the research. All I was, all I'm trying to do is compile together what way smarter and holier people than I have seen, yeah. and that's my. So, what? Uh, so, yeah, the the catechism thing. I I did a video on, on the catechism and aliens, and it got a good number of views. And and some people looked at that and have completely mischaracterized my approach as saying he just rejects aliens because of this one paragraph in the catechism. That was just one argument i decided i'd make a youtube video about that's that's they're, they're talking paragraph three paragraph 356 right? i think it is if i recall correctly um i got the quote somewhere here it's either 356 or 365 i always forget but that's one of oh there it is 356 perfect so that's that's one of about a thousand arguments i have against yeah. aliens it happens to be one i made a youtube video again so some people seem to think that's my whole argument in fact that's a very small part of it but yeah it's a good it, it does rule out aliens this paragraph if you if you submit to it which we all should it says of all visible creatures only man is able to know and love his creator so and what and here's something i i suspect most people might just know there's a certain uh punctuation mark that comes after that and that's called a period and that, that, that means that the thought that was just presented in that sentence stands on its own. It's not contingent. Yes, there's always context. That's always important to consider. But the teaching contained in that sentence is not contingent. It is not mitigated by what follows. And I'm sure I won't get into all the details sufficiently in this video here. So just understand that I've got this, I've got this fully uh, described in part two of my book. But what that says is that visible of all visible meaning material corporeal of all material creatures in other words other than angels only man and what is man man is a descendant of adam and eve only descendants of adam and eve are even capable it's only even possible for man to know and love god if there were aliens and by aliens i mean incarnate extraterrestrial intelligent creatures if there were aliens they could know and love God by yeah. mere by by virtue of the fact they have reason. That is also Catholic teaching. It's actually Catholic teaching that God can be known and therefore loved on based on reason alone. A lot of Catholics don't realize that. They think, oh, faith is just a gift. I can't I can't argue for God at all because it's just you just have to have the gift of faith, whatever. And that that's false. You can actually conclude with certainty. You, you can actually know God with certainty. This is also in the Catechism somewhere, but I think it's quoting the First Vatican Council. You can know God with certainty from reason alone. Yeah, if you can, if you can contemplate your origin, mm-hmm. if you can contemplate your death, you can clearly contemplate who made you and where you came from. So if there's an intelligence out there that is incarnate, right? I mean, you're talking about something that is, we're not talking about angels and demons. Yeah, we do believe there are incorporeal and they can know and love God, of course. Correct. And that's why the catechism specifically says we're only talking here about visible creatures. Yeah. So the idea that there could be an intelligent creature that has rational rationale 
and rationality and, and reason to enough to build craft to travel through. And they, uh, yeah, they obviously have reason if they can do that. They have <clears> reason. <throat> Yeah. And better reason than us, apparently, because right. we can't even we can't even yeah, get to the moon. Right. I was gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> so we can't get to the moon. Um, yeah, it's just uh, to me, it seems like a no brainer, and it and it just seems so connected to the evolution thing that mm -hmm. the idea that um, we are, I, I think, evolution plays the same game as this. It's just to get you to doubt your faith. If you look at um, evolution is just a creation myth because that's all it is. Because every civilization that has ever existed throughout history had a creation myth, and Christianity has its own creation myth. So, if you want to get rid of Christianity itself, you have to get rid of its foundation, which is the creation myth. So, you come up with this other right. way, this other explanation for how we came to be, exactly. and now that doesn't require a creator. Oh, we and just it's, happen it's to our, you, that. Uh, now, our creation myth happens to be creation reality. Correct. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's still if they could, get, but if they could get rid of this foundational story for how we came to be, right. they could throw in this other one and say that it just comes about through just it does. There's no right. there's no other explanation, but it just does. And now you no longer need there to be a God and a creator. And I think the alien thing just plays along with that, where they're saying if it happened here, it had to happen somewhere else. Yeah, because it really would it would have to happen somewhere else. And the only way there could be alien life to me would, it would mean that we are not created in the image and likeness of God. And we are not, because what are these things created in? Right. And, and you can say that with respect to, of course, that's above all reference to the soul. God is the father, son, and Holy spirit. Our soul is intellect, memory, and will. So we see the Trinity reflected in our soul. That's the primary way we're made in the image of God, but that's not the only way. We're also, and this is very clear in, in John Paul II, and, and there's other quotes in the book I have from other sources that make this very clear. We are also made in the image of God in our bodies. The human body is not some yeah. random way of making, uh, in, of making a visible, that is material, corporeal creature in the image of God. It's the only way. This, we, we love, we, we, Manichae, this Manichaean heresy where there's, you know, spirit and matter and they're fundamentally opposed and, and it's all about just, rising above matter and letting spirit override matter and reject it. That that's not Christian. That's not Catholic. The Catholic understanding is we bear the image of God in both body and soul. So if all sorts of, of reptilian or insectoid looking aliens are also made in the image of God, suddenly that means we're not if, if we are made differently. And of course we know that's not true. We are the unique creature made in the image of God. Body what were soul. some of the, what were some of the coolest things that surprised you in your research like wh who who studied who 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 spoke on it that you were like whoa just, i didn't know uh... just how right i was <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the most arrogant thing i'm sorry i'm sorry that's arrogant but it's true just i went into this having a deep conviction and i and i came to this from study and prayer that, that only man is made in god's image and all this alien nonsense it's all sci-fi deception but I, I approach this from a blank slate, and I have a little note on this in the introductory notes. I had no idea that there were all these authors before me, these evangelical and Eastern Orthodox authors before me who had written on similar topics. Um, I, I just had this 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 Catholic, this I live and breathe Catholicism. It's everything for me. And, and from that flowed this conviction that, of course, only we I made in his image. Of course, there's not all these other civilizations he also made with other incarnations and other churches. That's just garbage. That doesn't jive with the gospel or sacred tradition at all. But when I, I like, I, I kind of approach this with some trepidation, knowing that there hasn't been a recent rigorous Catholic treatment of this yet. So I wasn't, I didn't know what I would find when I really embarked upon the research. But what I did find was that every single aspect you analyze this from confirms the conclusion that there are no aliens. The best that the alien promoters today can do is mine out a couple bogus quotes that were never said from a couple supposed saints or our saints, but who did not say what they say they said in relation to aliens. And they've got a few scripture quotes they also completely twist, which if we have time to, maybe we'll get to, maybe not. If not, I've got it all in the appendices of the book. But so that surprised me just how like every, <clears throat> whether it's scripture or the fathers of the church, or the mag papal magisterium, or the count, the ecumenical councils, 
from Chalcedon all the way up to Vatican II or, um, or private revelation or liturgy, no, like no matter what angle you approach this from, not a single one gives the slightest grounds for believing in aliens. And all of them, either explicitly or implicitly, refute aliens, every single one. The, and, and that's one thing that pleasantly surprised me is that there's, there's really no confusion about this for a, an intellectually honest person who explores it. Now, I'm not calling you dishonest if you aren't sure about aliens. I know because because this is there's so much confusion out there. But if you really explore this to, to the extent that I have over these last three years of an unbelievable amount of time dedicated to this more than I want to even admit, for an intellectually honest person who does all that research, which I tried my best to summarize in this book, you will realize indisputably that there are no aliens. So that's that's kind of pleasantly surprised me. The other thing that surprised me was how unbelievably diabolical this has been for the last 75 years. Um, you can look at any, any one of the most famous, renowned alien promoters in the world, and you can look at their public claims in their most popular works, and you can see the diabolical shining forth in everything that they propose. So you don't have to do this thing called nut picking. You guys know the phrase nut picking? No, what's that? Or nut picking is when you hate a movement. Oh, I, it's like straw manning. Yeah, so it's basically a straw man. It's a little less fallacious than that, but it's still fallacious because these are real. These nuts are real. Yeah. You find the craziest person arguing for some thesis, even if he's a no one, even if he's some fringe no one, and you mine out his most crazy quotes and you say, this is what the movement is, and you condemn it based on, that's nut picking. Yeah. You don't have to nut pick with ufology. The most famous, renowned ufologists and alien ab abductees. All you have to do is look at their public statements and they are describing the demonic. They are, they are like veritably describing it. It's right there for everyone to see. And if you look at the, um, re the accounts of UFO sightings, even in general, you're left with 95 to 98% of the time some obvious some earthly phenomenon misinterpreted as i said but the remaining cases every single one every single one you are left with something that a demon could easily replicate and that's why i have a whole chapter on this in the book is we've got thousands if not millions actually for the last decades of claims of of et contact ufo sightings isn't it a little bit strange that all of the ones 100 not 99 not 99.9 100% of the of these experiences that we actually have reliable testimony of, they only describe things that a demon could easily replicate. When like you start what? looking at, so a demon can, there's all sorts, <laughs> the, people don't seem to realize what demons can do today. First of all, they don't, mm -hmm. most people don't believe in demons. So that's why we're so primed for this today. Of course, right when, right when people don't believe in demons, that's of course right when they would want to unleash their greatest deception yet. But the um, so a demon, uh, I've got I've got several chapters in this actually where I wanted to lay down just what a demon is actually capable of. Now, a demon cannot work a true miracle. That's the case. That's in, that's indeed true. That's but people kind of emphasize that a little bit too much to their demise because a demon can seem to work mm -hmm. a true miracle based on our fallibility of interpreting what we saw. They can do all sorts of things that would seem like true miracles to us. A miracle have, being the suspension of, of the natural law. Actual full-blown suspension of a natural law. Exactly. Strictly speaking, only God can perform a true miracle and, and a complete overturning of the natural order. And a true resurrection uh, and any, any, any outright suspension even of the laws uh, of, of nature of any sort. That, that's a miracle and that would be from God alone. But the demons can make it seem like they do that because they can modify light as it goes through the air. They can modify sound as it goes through the air. So they can easily take a bird flying or, or, or something else, mess with those photons as they go through the air and hit either your eyes or a sensor. That's, the, that's what people, this is a straw man. So people say, oh, but sensors are picking this up also. Sensors receive input from light and sound just as our eyes and ears do. Of course, if a demon's messing with something as it's shooting through the air, it's going to interfere with the and sensor I, just as much as And I think we all know demons can mess with technology, right? And tech, they, they can mess with the... <laughs> they can mess with the... Uh, um, 
and I actually have a little section on this also that I'll have to delve more into it in a later work maybe, but they can mess with the, the flow of electricity going through digital circuitry. And that's why I think this weighs big into the AI deception as well. There are a couple domains where the demons have especially potent abilities. The atmosphere is one of them. And the fathers of the church wrote on this extensively, and it's even in scripture, you know, the prince of the power of the air. The fathers wrote extensively, Augustine even, on this isn't just a, a Greek father's thing. So on how many illusions are, are wrought through the machinations of demons in the atmosphere. It's almost like they warned us verbatim against the UFO deception 15, yeah. 1700 years ago. It's amazing when you look at the quotes from these fathers, uh, whether it's uh, Anthony or Athanasius or Augustine, I've got lengthy quotes from, from all of them and more in the book, but they can, they can work all these marvels in the air because it's ephemeral. The more ephemeral something is, the less incarnate it is, the more power demons have over it. And, and also the, the more shrouded in darkness it is. UFO sightings, the vast majority of them, and, and yes, they happen in the daytime too. It's not like demons can't do anything during the day. But at night and in the atmosphere, that's the most ephemeral. And it's also where the demons have the most power. So what do you see with UFO sightings? They, they increase dramatically. And, and I drew from a number of studies that have extensively looked into this. They increase dramatically at nightfall. And then once people start going to bed, going to sleep, uh, naturally, of course, just statistically, they decrease. And then guess what hour they suddenly start increasing? Let me just let sunset. you guess. Sunset. Well, sunset is when if that's the first increase. And then they, start, they decrease when people start going to bed. When do you think like 3 a.m. Right? 3 a. Yes, you're right. Exactly. Yeah, 3 and, and you didn't even read, you didn't read the book yet, right? <laughs> no, no. But it, that's the that's like the witching hour. The that's, when, that's when everyone right. wakes up. That's the right. nightmares yeah. and all. Yeah. And then um, UFO sightings suddenly explode at 3 a.m. Well, we also have these stories in Exodus where <laughs> the magicians knows. of Pharaoh are able to manipulate things. Right? right. We have the story of Saint Patrick where he's going up against the Druids and right. they're able to perform these illusions that seem to be like miracles and things like that so obviously mm -hmm. they're able to do these things nick said that aquinas said part of the demon's punishment is that they have to be in our atmosphere according to aquinas so part of demon's punishment is to be in our atmosphere according to aquinas you know mm -hmm. and it it's probably no surprise that it's happening more and more when we have fewer and fewer blessed church bells ringing and like actually blessing the atmosphere there you go yeah the less protection we have the more the demons can do and and that reminds me to throw out there i am not at all encouraging any devout soul to be afraid of this i'm i'm sounding this alarm for the sake of those who would otherwise wander into these domains you've got if you're a devout catholic seeking out the protections that the church has given us and, and trusting in jesus christ you've got absolutely nothing to fear so don't do not let anything i say cause you to become anxious and fearful and worried that's not my goal here my goal is to warn those who would otherwise succumb based on their sci-fi based curiosity curiosity yeah. killed the cat and it kills many souls as well mm -hmm. so okay so um so you're saying almost all of these accounts are very similar and they all yeah and 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 i i was just getting warmed up you know sit back and, <laughs> and get comfortable because <laughs> i can go on for hours about this but really and i'm i'm joking i mean i could go on for hours but i won't but real quick it's not just that they can mess with light and sound as goes through air so they can do three fun. There, there's several things they can. There's several categories of their powers that I go through in the book, but I, I would simplify it into three basic categories. They can mess directly with our senses. They can mess with light and sound as it goes through the air. But there's also a third category that that too too few people acknowledge. They can actually temporarily assume a corporeal form. So if they assume a corporeal form, they're not truly becoming incarnate. That's outside of a demon's power. So they. You can't accuse me of begging the question here, circular reasoning, by just saying, oh, I'll just claim any alien is a demon. No, I acknowledge that there's a number of things demons can't do. They act, they can't leave a corpse that we could actually study in a lab that, that, would, that would endure throughout time because they can only temporarily assume a corporeal form. They cannot truly incarnate themselves. That's beyond their power. But we have no evidence of an actual alien body, just a bunch of claims and hearsay and garbage that will never be proven because it's all a lie. But they can temporarily assume a corporeal form. So this is what people don't get is if a demon has temporarily assumed a corporeal form, and we know that's within the power of the angelic nature, which demons have angelic nature. They're not angels anymore because they rebel, but they have they retain the capacities of that nature because they still have that nature. 
And of course, we know angels have that because they, in the book of Tobit and the three, the three angels in, in, uh, with Abraham, a number of other cases in the Bible where angels assume a corporeal form. So a demon can do that as well. And if a demon has actually assumed a corporeal form, which doesn't mean that it's literally become incarnate, it just means that it's, it's, it's controlled. It, it's decided to control. Its will is exerted over a certain amalgamation of molecules. And it's arranging them in such a way that there's really something happening there. If that's happening, and it'll only be temporary, which is why these phenomena are always fleeting. They never have anything enduring that we can study. But when that happens, naturally, anyone present would see it because it really is there. It's just not a real physical being. Yeah. It's a corporeal form that was temporarily assumed by a demon. Now, yes, admittedly, that requires a relatively long leash for the demons. Usually throughout most of of the history of Christendom, they haven't been able, they haven't had the leeway from God's providence. Everything demons can ever do is only because God allows it. They usually haven't been given that leeway. But my, that's my whole point is that people who say, that, oh, they usually haven't been given that leeway throughout Christendom's history. So they can't have it now. You're presupposing that my uh, argument is invalid in the very attempt, in your very attempt to argue it's invalid. My whole argument is that this is the great deception. This is what scripture yeah. speaks of, of the strong delusion where God allows mm. a demons these abilities to delude us like never before. I believe we're in that now. And it still categorically has to involve only events that are within the power of demons. And it just so happens that everything, everything in the ET UFO phenomena that we actually have evidence for is within the power of demons. Yeah, that's pretty wild. What were, <clears throat> Were there any? Oh, wait, actually, there was one question. Somebody asked, right? Can can yes, demons can also be, manipulate? So our the demons. So the ma imagination being, you know, the phantasms in the corporeal, in in the in the neurochemistry, basically, is one way to put it. They can mess with that. They cannot directly access your mind or your will or your memory. Now, the memory is, is debatable. So that some strict Thomists do not pin memory as a faculty of the soul. I do. I am a Thomist, but I, I do believe that memory is a faculty of the soul. And that even that is memory itself is outside of the power of demons. So intellect, memory, and will. Uh, even the devil can't directly inject himself into intellect, memory, and will. Those are the strict domain of God. But because we're incarnate creatures, there's a lot of stuff going on in our neurochemistry that is fundamentally physical, but it's a very proximate effect of intellect, memory, and will. And the demons can mess with that. So... It, it, this requires an immense degree of discernment. And, and by the way, a devout, faithful, pious Catholic is probably not going to have to worry about this at all. You're very protected. But for those who wander into Satan's leash, he can mess with their imagination to such a degree that they actually think they're remembering things or seeing things that are just not there at all or didn't happen at all. He can do that, yes. Man, what, were there any any stories that because I remember even when the guy was on um, was in in front of Congress talking, right? He they were like, "So you're telling us you found bodies?" He's like, "I'm telling you, we found non-human biological." Like he was so <laughs> biological. <unclear. laughs> <was the> word. <laughs> he was just so unclear about it that it's right, like, dude, right. did you find aliens or not? Like, why right. are you being so? vague about what you're because you're under oath and you won't just mm -hmm. come right out and say yes we found alien but well we found non-human uh remains that it's like was it a dog was it, what do you right. mean was, non was, it, was it a tree yeah that's how this always is that's how it's been yeah. for 75 years since roswell the the excuse is always the same every time i know it i just can't say it because it's classified they've that's been crazy. giving us this lie every couple years for 75 years and we buy it each time and, and these co these gullible catholics even buy it each time and they go promoting it i mean even the even the most famous so-called orthodox catholics they're not just saying oh you can believe in aliens and be catholic they're saying aliens are probably here which is an infinitely worse you know you know in the 1800s when they were speculating about aliens this was all abstract and theoretical since 1947 that's completely different it, it's yeah. it's now concrete it's now a question, not not just an abstract theological question. It's an immediate, practical question of: Are these beings? Are these other beings that God made that that we should be dialoguing with that are just like us, or are they demons? That you can't imagine a more practical question than that. How do we confront this phenomena? So, when someone goes beyond just abstractly believing in the possibility of aliens and wanders into the domain of saying, "Yeah, they're here," 
Roswell and the UFOs, they're here. You just wandered from danger and you just went from the frying pan into the fire. That yeah. That's just way worse. And that's why this is an infinitely more pressing issue than it was back in the Enlightenment days, which it was evil enough back then that Catholics were talking about this. But it, it, it's, it's infinitely more pressing and apocalyptic and spiritually dangerous today. It, it makes me worried that so many modern day apologists are willing to play around with these things. And and, mm -hmm. and it goes with evolution. Too. I mean, look, we're talking about Jimmy Aiken. Jimmy Aiken is uh, really great on some apologetics. I think he's really, he wrote, he wrote a great book on the church. The Fathers Know Best. That's a great book. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's really good on a lot of apologetics. But then when he gets into stuff like this, it makes me nervous because it, it's it's just playing around with things that, okay, so I, it, it's as if they think by saying we believe in evolution and we're okay with the idea of aliens that they're appealing to people that will then go, okay, well, maybe those Catholics aren't so they're not like the Protestants who, who you know, right. they're just fundamentalists and stuff, but it's, mm -hmm. it's like they're not what a going to convert. Way to evangelize. Yeah. They're not going to mm -hmm. convert because you're saying that aliens are possible. They're not going right. to convert because you believe evolution. We came from monkeys. That's not. Right. They're going to laugh. We've at been you saying anyway. that for many decades. Where's the wave of converts? Exactly. <laughs> it's not. It's just. Look, if it's, it's, if it's going to damage the faith of those who already have the faith. I mean, especially with everything that's going on in the church right now. Mm -hmm. There's enough things coming up against people's faith that to me all I want to do is go back to a time when none of this stuff was so muddled and unclear. Right. We I mean, you're just everything just seems so muddled and unclear that they're shaking the foundations of every single thing we believed as Catholics forever. Mm -hmm. And it's it just seems like one thing after another. They're just trying to whittle away at the foundation for all of us. But what they need is an umbrella to unify all this whittling away into one rebellion against God. And and my you know that that's why I, I think this is this alien stuff is so dangerous. I think this gives them the umbrella to unify. I, like, I really see it as the synthesis of all apostasies. I see it as the the one thesis they can unify all their whittling away of the faith against and, and just promote it under the under the guise of one deception, the aliens. They made us, they're gonna save us, they've been guiding us this whole time. That the, these is what this is what they're saying. People they're not just saying yeah. that they're here now. A lot the ET promoters, most of them are saying the aliens have been here for thousands of years. They're saying that Fatima was just a UFO. They're saying the biblical miracles. There you go, Dallas. They're saying that the UFOs made us and, and that God's they're, they're They'll still believe in God, but they're pushing him into. They'll still believe in Jesus and God and and, Mar and the Virgin Mary and the Church. But th what what this does is it pushes them all off to the side. It still maintains superficial belief in them, but it makes them kind of unimportant compared to the aliens. And you know, I had a student. I was grading papers some years ago, and this was back when I don't know when exactly this was, but this is when alien UFOs were big in the news. And she wrote. All this, all these revelations, all this news about aliens, it just makes God and Jesus and everything look so small. <laughs> and when I read my student's paper who wrote that, it just broke my heart. And it, and it reminded me, this is what they're doing. They're not trying. It's more dangerous than explicit apostasy because it's it's what St. Paul said in Scripture, that they will hold the form of In the last times, they will hold to the form of religion but deny its power. So they'll still be able to go to Mass on Sundays and recite the creed with boredom and all that. But Jesus and the church and salvation history, all that becomes just kind of minimal, kind of minor compared to the astounding revelations the aliens are about to give us. That's where their real heart of heart lies. And that's another reason I think this is so apocalyptic. Yeah, I think that I think the great apostasy we've been talking about it for a long time now is not just people leaving the church. It's that people in the church still desire to be called Catholic, but don't believe the faith. Right. I mean, your typical cafeteria Catholic is someone who goes to mass, goes about the, the, the ritual, but doesn't really believe the faith anymore. And, and that to me, like, that's exactly what St. Paul's saying. They, they still hold the form, mm -hmm. but they, but they don't believe the actual faith. And I think mm -hmm. so many of these things coming together like this, even with artificial intelligence, right. It, they're all, trying to uh, cultures forever have dealt with non-human intelligences 
we're, we're dealing with demons and, and exactly. angels, right? Like, exactly. and we spent the past hundred years trying to dispel that superstition. There is no non-human intelligence. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And now we're trying to create a non-human intelligence. Right. And we have no idea what we're about to unleash on ourselves because people's desire to worship is so strong within us that if they do create some kind of fake intelligence in this world people are going to worship it. i mean we already do in a way right our mm -hmm. screens are on altars in our homes every one of our homes we have these screens on our altars and we sit down and we and we're, and we're just sitting in front of them and staring mm -hmm. at them and we give more time to that than any of us do to prayer anymore now we mm -hmm. have that now we have our screens in our hands. I mean, the idea that we won't worship this thing that's coming down the pike is so crazy to me and that people are going to just give themselves They're desperate over to. to. Yeah. Yeah. They're already desperate to. They're desperate for something to worship because we've become pagan atheists. And man is by nature a religious being. He's actually, man is by nature a religious being before any other definition of his essence. He needs to worship. And we haven't worshiped as a, as a culture for many decades. So. This idea of not, I'm glad you brought up that phrase, non-human intelligence, because that's actually the more broad deception that even the alien deception fits within. Now, I, I, I focused especially on the ET UFO deception because I think that's the biggest part of the NHI, non-human intelligence deception. But it's also this idea of truly human or truly rational AI. That's going to be the second biggest aspect of it. But there's even more. Birds of a feather flock together. The, the, the UFO promoters, the ET promoters, all of them, without exception, I found, are all also obsessed about the, pos about the emergence of sentient AI. But there's even more. There's even this push for the notion that animals, there's irrational animals, are also persons, are also rational, just like us. We just haven't yet unlocked the key to their communication. And this is yet another deception under the same umbrella. I, you know, I would have doubled the book's length so i couldn't do <laughs> too much more on it but i do have a chapter on this in the book and it's it, it ties so the biggest the most well-funded project right now to prove that animals are also intelligent like us and and they communicate like us we just haven't unlocked it yet it's also called guess what seti <laughs> it's not s-e-t-i it's they're not, not the search even for trying action. anymore they're not no they're they're just telling us that this is all the same diabolical deception but it's C-E-T-I. It's the Cartesian, and I'm, I'm caught, uh, Cartesian, something like that. Whales and dolphins. Search for uh, the search for Cartesian. I'm, but, I'm butchering it. But it's the yeah, search for right. smart dolphins. <laughs> yeah, and smart they've got dolphins. tens of millions of dollars in funding. And they are convinced that with AI being able to decipher the language of whales, we are going to be saved by the wisdom of the whales. <laughs> it, it, this is real. This, it's this like Star like Trek Four. <laughs> yeah, exactly it's it, humanity is desperate for something other than us yeah who understands us because we don't believe in god anymore because we don't believe in the angels because we don't believe in the community of saints because we don't believe in heaven and purgatory and hell because we don't believe in, in private revelation apparitions because we don't believe in any of that anymore even most catholics they're they're, they're they're closet deists unfortunately because they because people don't believe in any of that anymore they find the outlet for this fundamental need of the human heart for dialogue. They find it in these sci-fi deceptions about non-human intelligence. And that is why this last deception, I believe we're approaching the great deception, obviously, it mirrors the first deception. And I've been writing about this for a long time. The first deception was a non-human intelligence, a speaking serpent. And instead of saying, be gone, Satan, Eve started dialoguing because yeah. of her curiosity. And that is the exact same thing that's happening today. The, sa the, the serpent is not, the, the, the devil is assuming different forms, but he's still saying basically the same thing. Did God really say? Did he really say that? Yeah. He's not even explicitly, he doesn't begin by explicitly overturning a dogma. He injects himself with a curiosity. Mm -hmm. Just as he did with Eve, so he's doing today. I just want one of my comments to end up on the main screen. These guys can't. And these guys can say whatever they want. <laughs> Thank goodness, because I got a lot more. I got a lot um, more. We, we had a question up there. We had a question up there, Rob. Uh, we have two. You... Okay, go ahead. Um, we'll start with the the older one here first. Um, so this this uh, Colby saying that Father Gergu Lagrange 
so that the existence of undis- undiscovered life forms is possible, not contrary to the Catholic faith. Have you- Garagou Lagrange said that it's not intrinsically abhorrent. He said, I can't remember the exact phrase he is, but I've, I've read that quote. He did not say it's not contrary to the faith. He said it's not intrinsically something. So he's basically mm-hmm. agreeing with those who said, yeah, it's ontologically, metaphysically possible that God could create aliens. I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that God, that this is within his power. I'm denying that he did so. And in fact, there's another quote from Gary Legrand that specifically said he didn't, it, it's not clear how this could work with the faith. I've got it in the book. Um, it, it would take me too long to find it right now, but I've got it somewhere in part two of the book where he basically said, no, like people are speculating about this, but it's not clear how that could make any sense with the faith. So it's, yeah, you'll find, and there's other quotes like that. And I've addressed every single one in the book. Yeah. That That's how you'll often find um Catholic alien belief promoted at first. You'll find they'll they'll almost always start with an alleged quote. And I know the Gary Grugland one is true. I know that's an actual quote. But again, he's not saying there's he's not saying aliens are fine with the faith. He's saying it's not. He's agreeing with a number of of theologians throughout church history who said it's not outside of God's power. Uh, he's not saying it's fine with Catholicism. But anyway, it's um you'll almost all Catholic alien promotion starts with some quote, whether it's real like that. Or mis- and misinterpreted, or whether it's completely bogus, like the supposed Padre Pio or John Paul II quotes, which are bogus. They did not believe in aliens. Yeah. But the the contemporary mainstream Catholic alien promoters, they based almost their entire argument on these bogus quotes, which I t- dedicate a lot of pages to in the appendices of the book, to showing we have no grounds for believing these quotes are authentic at all. I do have that Lagrange quote pulled up if you want me to read it. Yes, please do. Uh, he says, some seem to be of the opinion that on other heavenly bodies, perhaps there are rational animals of another species than man. But this seems to be false. For the term rational animal seems to be not a genus, but the ultimate species, according to the principle of continuity. For the highest and the lowest order, for instance, the sensitive life, touches the lowest and the highest order, namely the in- into- <clears throat> into- intellective life. Hence, there is no conjunction of the highest and the sensitive life with the lowest and the intelli- inte- intellective life, except in one species. And this is not susceptible to either increase or decrease. So, yeah. So that's, is that the one that I have? In the, that's the one I have in the book, right? Yep. So that's Gary Goulagrand basically refuting those. So I, I go into every possible avenue here, but there's a number of theologians who have argued they've tried to sneak their way out of the fathers of the church and the doctors of the church and two popes magisteriums who said, we can't say there's aliens. I mean, that's not the exact word they use, but Pope Zachary, Pope Pius X, uh, not 10th, uh, second, they both said, you can't believe. It, it, he, they said it's abominable to believe yeah. in the notion of other men uh, and other species, basically. So what some theologians have tried to do, they've tried to wiggle out of that by talking, by redefining man, redefining species, redefining nature. In all these weird ways that that basically borrow from modern taxonomy, which which the popes were not speaking under the context of, they were talking about the traditional definition of man, which is either philosophical, theological, namely rational animal, or a colloquial, namely descendant of Adam and Eve, you know, human family. Those are the two basic ways of defining man: philosophically, theologically, or colloquially. And they both converge perfectly in a way that refutes aliens. Anyway. Garagul Grand was refuting those theologians who said, no, we can mess with the definition of species, biological species, Homo sapiens, which was this invention from the 1700s, by the way. And we can use that to conjecture, to hypothesize the possibility of, of men of a different biological species. Mm. And we can try to sneak our way around the magisterial condemnations of aliens that way. We can sneak away from polygenism and the condemnations from Pope Zachary and Pope Pius II that way. And this completely fails in like three different ways. And I tried to, I actually had to remove one of the chapters from the books. It was too long and I, I couldn't fit publication uh, rules for page length. But I have it on my website and I have it in the book where you can find it on my website where I refute this. But Garrigou Grange does it directly in that quote. He points out, no, we've got continuity in the hierarchy of creation here. We've got angels, which are pure spirit, invisible, incorporeal. And then we've got one species, which is the soul. In other words, man, human beings which are the sole uh, creatures who have both matter and spirit and are intelligent, rational. That's what Gary Goulgrange is pointing out here. This doesn't admit increase or decrease. There can't be all sorts of other other 
applications of this. There really can only be one incarnate species of rational beings, and that's mm. us. And it's also Catholic dogma because polygenism is a condemned heresy. It's also Catholic dogma that all men are descendants of Adam and Eve. So if you combine those two Catholic dogmas, you realize there can't be aliens. And this is why Pope Pius II and Pope St. Zachary, they didn't just say this is wrong. In their writings, they said this is pernicious and against the faith and, and abominable. <laughs> they, they were much harsher than I am in their in their condemnation <laughs> of these ideas. <laughs> We, we were talking in the green room and I told you, it kind of reminds me of even the, like, because neither of us have really studied young earth creationism, right? It's, mm. it's, it's one of those things where to me, this, it's not nearly on the same level of if you find out that the world is 5 billion years old, like that, that really doesn't affect anything at all. But the idea that um, the, the way they do science nowadays is, they assume that okay so when they when they find dinosaur bones they they don't radiocarbon date dinosaur bones to de determine their age they see where they land in like the sediment of of the of the earth mm -hmm. and they say okay well it's this deep into the earth and we know that this much sediment comes each year or this much erosion happens each year so we could just multiply that by however many and they do that based on this idea that the conditions on earth are unchanging from the beginning of time right. or from the beginning of the earth or whatever. So they say, okay, well that means it goes back 5 billion years. But if there's this cataclysmic event, like a flood, like a giant flood on earth, which when you watch even things like Graham Hancock's ancient apocalypse kind of suggests that there was this global worldwide flood. You see all these mm -hmm. cultures around the world all have a flood myth that that changes any kind of, uh, data that you would think that everything was the same throughout history. No, now you have this event that changed everything and washed everything up wherever the heck it did. So now you really can't say that these dinosaurs are 60 million years old because they're this deep into the earth. Yeah. So that, it, that's it, it fails for so many reasons. It, it, it's what, what they fail to acknowledge or even concede is that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. We've got a mountain of premise uh, of hypotheses built on one single unproven premise, namely that radiometric dating is, is, is algorithmically consistent for millions of years. And it's never been proven to be algorithmically consistent beyond 6,000 years. We've never verified yeah. it against another standard. And the, the example I always use is it's as if you were convicted of a speeding ticket for a hundred miles an hour for a radar gun that was only verified to work up to one mile an hour. You would never be convicted of that in yeah. court because any sane judge would say this is garbage. You can't I can't convict you of a speeding ticket based on something. We don't know if it even works beyond one mile an hour, but that's what mm -hmm. they do with all radiometric dating. So you talked about the sediments. Those that's that's a type of relative dating. But yeah. any sort of relative dating in order to have any meaning, it has to at some point rely on an absolute dating method. And the only absolute dating method is radiometric. There's nothing else. There's no other absolute dating method that has been used to date living things on earth beyond 6,000 years. You know, any elementary school kid knows that you can find out how old some really old thing is by how counting the rings on a tree. We found all sorts of trees with four to 6,000 rings. Guess what we've never found ever <laughs> a single tree with more than 6,000 rings. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Isn't that weird if, if you believe that we got all these billi these trees that are tens of, you know, if you look online, you'll find all sorts of claims of tree trees that are tens of thousands of years old. Read the fine print. Guess how every single one of those has been dated? Radiometric, whether carbon dating or some other radiometric dating. It's the single unproven premise on which the entire facade of this idea that there's, oh, there's humanoid, there's non-biblical man, there's biblical man, there's all sorts of of other primates that existed before us and that kind of had reason that's all garbage yeah they and didn't some people try they to weren't use human they did not have the faculties of humans so, yeah. and, so and there were I, there were no living things at all i would say before six thousand years ago and that's i didn't get into that in the book because i know i'll scare some people away and it's you don't need to believe you don't need to believe be as hardcore yeah, that, as i am on that to realize there's no aliens but <laughs> but it, it's true there, there they, we have no proof of any living thing more than six thousand years old they have a there's a Catholic evolutionist who made a statement and he said, yeah, but we don't believe that God would purposely confuse us. 
So why would he, uh, you know, when, when and, and he said that because they talk, they talk about adaptation within a species and that, but I've heard that comment thrown out by Catholics at that point. And they go, well, why would God purposely lead to confuse? It's like, well, he gave us a book yeah. and a story. I'm not confused. So, so why would he tell a story that's <laughs> I not read, yeah. true? <laughs> I read, I read the gospel of Luke and I'm not confused at all. Right. The gospel of Luke <laughs> says father to son, father to son, father to son, all the way from Jesus to who? Adam. And who's Adam? Is he the son of Mr. Monkey? No, he's the no. son of God. That's what, <laughs> no. that's what Luke says. He's the son of God, not the I, son of God like Jesus is, but like directly created by God. There's no, you know, people say, oh, well, maybe there's there's a few million year gaps in that genealogy. No, there's not. There's no contextual. There's no philological. There's no exegetical reason. There's there's no grounds whatsoever to put a hundred thousand year gap in there. It's father to son, father to son. Yes, there might be a couple grandfather to grandson or something like that, the Levitical marriages, but it never gets. You could never argue for uh, these tens of thousands of year old rational creatures based on that exegetical method it would never work. So I'm not confused at all. When you say God wouldn't confuse us, I, I agree. What God has said is not confusing. What, but man confuses us all the time. And these wild ideas, we never saw them before the 19th century. So you want to just you want to just build a castle on sand. You want to build your whole worldview based on a few baseless conjectures that have been made by a bunch of people because that's what all their peers are saying and then they'll get fired if they don't say the same thing, go ahead. But you're not building your worldview based on faith then. And that's what you should do. You should, faith and reason, they never contradict, but they will often seem to contradict because we're fallible. And when faith and reason seem to contradict, guess which one you stick with? Faith. Because that's superior. And I'm saying that as, as a philosopher whose job is reason. <laughs> like faith is superior. That's that's That was um, settled in, in the First Vatican Council and a number of other places. Yes, they never contradict, but faith is intrinsically superior. So when they seem to contradict, you stick with the faith. No matter how many apologists out there, they're, they're terrified of seeming not relevant to the world. So they'll do anything that, that that'll make them appear more relevant, which... It makes no converts, by the way. Like you, this makes no convert. It ju it just shows you every single one of these topics that we discussed tonight. Every single one of them are things that chisel away at the faith of the little ones, right? So they're all mm -hmm. these things. These kids are being thrown at school, and the things that they're being told by the culture, the things that they're seeing on TV, and every one of them makes people eventually question their faith. I mean, when you get into the dinosaur question almost unanimously you'll hear people go yeah i don't know i didn't know how to make sense of dinosaurs and adam and eve and and then you have catholics coming in and saying yeah no adam I and mean, the story of genesis is just poetry knock it off it's not poetry i'm not saying it's a a, a, a scientific account but it's also not poetry it is right. it is what actually and, and that's happened. pope pius, pope pius the 12th he said in humani generis that it is a fact that genesis recounts history in the true sense. You yeah. can't, as, as a Catholic and, and as a Christian, of course, but as a Catholic, certainly, you can't write off Genesis as mere myth. Yeah. It is settled that, that this is history. How to interpret each verse is not necessarily always immediately obvious, but you have to approach this understanding that it is history. It really is. Yeah, that's a good point, Stephen. <laughs> uh, Rob, do we have one more question? Because I want to go. We're going to go over to locals, and I. We Tom, I'm sorry. In. I I I just drove. I just got no, that my was, soliloquies there, and I just can't amazing. stop. I just, you <laughs> crazy, is it like? Is, is it late already? Oh my goodness! It's, it's getting there. But listen to me. When it, when you see time go fast like that, that means it's a good show. This is amazing. So we're going so, to go over to locals, we, and we're going to discuss. We're well, not yet. I'll let you get to it. Hang okay. on. I'm just saying we're going to get into prophecy end times the church you know, crisis we're going to talk good stuff so someone brought up an interesting one when, when daniel when you were talking about when you think the 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 more free reign of satan started someone brought up an interesting fact about that time frame that is relevant to events happening today so wait can i slip in one more thing about that that i realized i forgot to say in that regard yeah because I know you want to run to locals, but real quick. So not only is it Leo the 13th division, but it's also Pope St. Paul uh, the sixth. You know, everyone always quotes his smoke of Satan remark, but you got to look at the whole quote. When he, why did he say the smoke of Satan has entered the church? He said that at the beginning of the 1970s. So he's clearly commenting on the years that led up to that. Mm -hmm. He said that this, uh, the smoke of Satan has entered the church 
oh shoot, I don't have it in front of me, but but because of the pagan prophets of science. Too few people ignore the rest of that quote. He's not just making some comment on, on liturgy or something. He's taught, he specifically said the pagan prophets of science. So they're using science as their false god to infiltrate paganism into the church. And that's how the smoke of Satan entered. And it was especially in the years leading up to that in the 1960s that all these theologians in the Vatican, like Karl Rahner and Teilhard de Chardin in, in the years before the 60s, just a few years before that, started saying, yeah, there can be multiple incarnations. There can be all sorts of alien churches out there. It was in the years leading up to that. I think Paul VI saw the smoke of Satan entering into the church through this ET deception and other deceptions as well. Sure. I'm not saying the other deceptions aren't also valid, but this I think is, is the Supreme one, the pagan prophets of science. Yeah. So the, I have the quote here that you have in the book. Oh, okay. He You're says, so good at finding those quotes. <laughs> I wish I could find them as well. <laughs> through I, some, I had to throw this up. I had to throw this they blinded up. Us with <laughs> <laughs> They're blinding us with science. <laughs> through some crack, the smoke of Satan has entered the church of God. We trust the first pagan prophet we see who speaks to us in some newspaper. And we run behind him and ask him if he has the formula for true life. Doubt has entered through the windows that should have been open to the light. Science. Science. That's what has. It's the new the religion, man. It, it's it's so funny. All of this, I'm telling you, that uh, man, I was not even thinking about Young Earth stuff six six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We had we had Hugh Owen on. <laughs> it was, and it was this, Hugh Owen. Yeah. Hugh Owen's great. Broke, I quote him in the book. He broke my brain. I'm like, wait a minute. Why do I believe the same people <laughs> the, telling me to the next something? day? I'm getting texts from Anthony like, have you seen this this searching for dinosaurs documentary on YouTube? <laughs> they, like, they find soft tissue. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the people who tell you that life doesn't begin at conception, the people telling you that this carbon dioxide is heating the earth up and we're mm -hmm. all going to die from climate stuff, mm -hmm. the same people who tell you to take this stupid shot with right. oh, all the... I'm gonna all, it all goes together. People. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, these are the people telling me to let go of the faith that kept... that Literally the faith of my ancestors and that built Western civilization, throw that all out for this new thing. I'm not mm -hmm. doing it anymore. I don't trust mm -hmm. any of them. I don't right. care. And I don't right. care if people laugh at me for it because at first I was like, I don't know if I want to go down this young earth. Thing. I'm a young mm -hmm. earth creationist. I don't care what mm -hmm. people say. I yeah. don't, can't prove it, but right. I'm right. just makes yeah. so much sense. Try, in times of confusion, stick with what you know you can trust. That's a yeah. simple formula. And, and, and w when you're confused, you know, God is not the author of that confusion. So you go back to what you know is reliable, the foundations of the faith, the magisterium, scripture, the consensus of the saints. You will find none of this garbage in any of those sources. Yeah, guys, I, I'm going to tell all of you, listen to me, Daniel, first off, I'm so he's one of my favorite people that we've met. I know I say that a lot, but I, we've met some really awesome people. Over the least there. favorite of his favorite. <laughs> no, nah, man, Daniel, you're so cool, man. And and just we 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 have I mean, I could talk to you for four hours in the show. I, I, know, I feel right like by. we just started. We just we just started a few minutes ago. Right. <laughs> We're not done. So because I want to get into um, I want to get into some other stuff because there's a lot of confusion. I mean, I know a lot of. um catholic zionists that don't understand that the things that are happening in israel right now that they're getting very confused and they think that israel is the same israel that is spoken about in the old testament and and, and they're very confused about it and i, and I just mm -hmm. it's stuff that i really don't know if we could get away with on youtube and i want to have mm -hmm. a, a, a real conversation about it plus there's a lot of uh prophecy that you know is kind of lining up and i think that the synod just ended, and there's another one coming up next year. There's things I want to talk about that we could really get into. So we're going to head over there. Please go buy Daniel's book. Daniel's uh, a, a great I'll friend. I'll flash the Do you, the pro maybe there's a link in the description. Or, or there Oh, you got there. it as well, Rob. Thank you. Yep. So it's only man bears his image. You can look for it on Amazon. Maybe there's a link in the description or something. I don't know. but We will make sure there is a link in the description. Um, guys, go check out Daniel's book. We'll also... Uh, We'll probably cut some clips up to this. We'll put the link in all the clips that we put up. Um, a bunch of people already bought it, so I'm, uh, okay. I'm, sh 
I'm sure it's doing great, right, Daniel? I'm sure they all finished it already. It, Easy. It's to, number one in cozy UFOs up by the fireplace. And, yeah, Amazon, I get. Right? I, I decided to troll the ufologist. I figured I put it in the UFO <laughs> category and make you know, hope that that, that I, catch their attention. I saw somebody wrote something funny. They said, "I just bought Daniel's book, Completion Date, Year 2028." <laughs> it's going <laughs> yeah, to read it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys, we're going to head over to locals. It's free, so if you guys aren't a member yet it's still free we just want to be able to speak openly without worrying about the youtube sensors so just go over to our locals just join it it's free you guys can watch it live if you're going to check this out on the replay then you have to you know but if anybody that wants to come over now that's in the live stream can come and watch it for free we're going to head over there now thank you guys see you there okay i want to play a God video boy. so i know where to cut this and 